Chapter 11, Fruit or Soup in Cups. No, I took another slow breath. My heart rate was almost back to normal. And in our experience, we're not going to. What is that noise? Dalton asked. My stomach. I get real hungry after I see a bug. My nervous system works up energy like crazy. Officer Weston rested his chin in his hand, and I thought there were a lot of rules in the police academy. You'll be arrested by the etiquette police if they find you with your elbow on the table, I said, poking him. We learned that day one. At least elbows don't leave a print, he straightened up. Hey, Delton, you're not going to snitch on me, are you? Delton started in on how he'd been unfairly labeled, but he was interrupted by Miss Melton Mackerel coming back into the room with her fancy glasses on a tray. I perked up. There looked to be some real food in them. After she and Miss Glennon sat down, she said, Well then, now that we're in a calm, quiet state, let's practice passing our fruit cups. We pass with the right hand and receive with the left. Place the glass at 12 o'clock, approximately 8 inches from the edge of the table. No, Miss Corcoran, it's not a beer stein. Hold the stem between your thumb and forefinger, using your middle finger for ballast if needed. Excuse me, if need be. It didn't... I didn't understand half the stuff she said, but I watched her and made it better by using my pinky as a rudder, straight as a board, like you see in the, all the Charlie Chaplin movies. Now I would like you each in turn, beginning with Officer Weston, to take two bites of fruit. Officer Weston stared into his glass. I can't eat the pineapple, he said. I'm allergic. It, takes my, it makes my throat close. Does that ever happen to you? He looked at me as he speared a piece of pineapple with his fork. Holding it out, he asked, Cassie, uh, Miss Corcoran, would you like my pineapple? I stared at the little piece of pineapple dripping with juice. Then I stole a look at Miss Melton Mowry, who was pinching the skin on, my, on her forehead the way ladies on commercials do when they have a tension headache. Sure. After Officer Weston scraped off his pineapple bit using the edge of my glass, he cleared his throat. Now you said two bites, right? I want to get an A on this part. Two bites, Miss Glennon said. Watermelon, strawberry, grape. It was impressive what Officer Weston could load onto his fork. He finished the whole dish in two bites. I clapped. Nice spearing technique. My turn? All eyes went to Miss Melton Mowry, who was pressing her napkin to her mouth as if she'd just eaten a fork load of fruit. She gave a little flutter with her hand that I took to mean yes. I was close to Officer Weston's performance except for kneading fingers to steady the grape before I skewered it. I even remembered to chew with my mouth closed after skimming it off my fork. Officer Weston gave me a thumbs up. Miss Melton Mowry was fanning herself with a school of poison purpose flyer. Mr. Bean, she said. Delton straightened his shoulders, picked up his spoon, and skimmed it over the top of the dish, starting on the side closest to him and finishing on the side farthest away where he tapped his spoon against the side of the glass before putting one measly piece of melon into his mouth. Miss Melton Mowry and Miss Glennon looked at each other, wide-eyed. Delton was going to need special tutoring. Mr. Bean? I watched your YouTube video on eating soup and applied transfer of knowledge to the fruit cup. He patted his mouth with his napkin and set it on the table. Elbowing Officer Weston, I whispered, I told you he was a suck-up. That was brilliant. Soup and fruit cup in one fell swoop, he whispered back. I raised my hand. I needed to see the grade sheet, I said. I thought the point of this was to eat. To eat politely. I chewed with my mouth closed. You chewed with your mouth closed, didn't you, Miss Officer Weston? You both drew attention to yourselves by trying to load an entire cup of fruit onto one forkful and make unpleasant noises as you ate. I think we should watch Mr. Bean demonstrate one more time. I'll have to go find another can of fruit. Officer Weston was still stuck on the whole fruit soup thing. But you eat soup with a spoon and fruit with a fork. It depends on how the fruit is delivered to you. What, what Mr. Bean has mastered is the ability to discern what method is most appropriate for eating and then proceeding without drawing attention to himself. But that does bring up a good point. We're just as likely to be served gazpacho for our first course as we are, I sighed, big time. How can I master gazpacho when I don't even know what it is? It's a raw soup with a base of tomatoes and finely chopped vegetables, Delton informed us. That's not soup. That's salsa. Don't you eat that with tortilla chips? Officer Weston was still stuck on the spoon for the fruit thing. 
but he pushed the spoon away from him. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. When one is eating soup, this gives it time to cool. And with a fruit cup, skimming the spoon over the far edge of the dish helps you catch any drips. It doesn't matter that it looks goofy. I wanted to know. It's like rowing backward. I agree with Cassidy, Officer Weston said. Even polite people must know that the way to get to your mouth is to go toward it. Miss Corcoran, you mean? Miss Glennon corrected. It made me glad to have Officer Weston along. At least with two people pointing out how crazy the rules were, manners class was more of a fair fight. Miss Melton marching orders ignored us both. You might also have noticed Mr. Bean's posture. He sat up straight and brought the spoon to his mouth rather than the other way around, and there was a peaceful silence as the food traveled to his mouth. As our teacher congratulated Delton, I whispered to Officer Weston, I thought you were supposed to eat the stuff, not take it on a trip. In fact, why don't you take another bite while Officer Weston and Miss Corcoran observe closely and then try to follow your example? Miss Glennon, shall we go find two more fruit cups? I need to confer with you in the kitchen. After they left, Officer Weston poked at the tablecloth with his fork. I guess it doesn't have to make sense if the future in-laws approve but I was still stuck on old Delton. He was supposed to be in trouble, like me, and on day one of detention, here he was, the teacher's pet. As soon as the door to the little kitchen had closed, I asked him, what I want to know is who in their right mind would think of going on YouTube for etiquette lessons during summer vacation? My mother, Delton, set down his spoon and swallowed again, even though the fruit was history. That's what she does. She searches out people on the internet. Companies hire her to improve their online business. She did a whole inventory of Miss Melton Mowry's web presence. Well, then why do you look so sour? Officer Weston asked Delton. You're at the head of the class. When Miss Melton Mowry tells my mother how good I am, she won't be happy at all. She thinks I'm a congenital pleaser. Congenital pleasers don't make great men. She wants me to have more backbone. Officer Weston took advantage of our teacher's absence to crack his knuckles. Shouldn't she have sent you to rugby camp or something? Oh no, she doesn't believe in aggression. Besides, whenever she sets up playmates with boys who have original minds, they usually beat me up. But I want to beat you up. Yes, but you don't. What's the point? It wouldn't be a fair fight. I don't like to see weaklings hurt. You know what you need, Delton. You need to watch our YouTube video on a good prank. Our, do you mean you and Jack? You make YouTube videos? Of course we don't, but if we did, I lowered my voice and gave Delton the rules of the prank. So the purpose of a prank is to annoy people, Delton repeated, making notes on his phone. Right, I said. Officer Weston nodded. But not hurt them. Sure, got to remember your karma. And cover up your tracks so no one suspects you, Officer Weston added. Delton and I looked at him. For a member of the police force, Officer Weston seemed awfully familiar with the concepts. What? I was a boy once, too. There's a difference between a harmless prank and cri criminal activity. When they work right, I told Delton, you can barely keep from laughing. You hold it in so hard, you get a stomach ache. So, misinformation, that was a prank, right? Delton could not let something alone until he understood it well enough to get an A on the test. It was supposed to be. If Miss Melton Mopey had come, had come out and seen a whole head of hair in the soup bowl, now that would have been the perfect etiquette, don't. But how can you be sure your prank doesn't go wrong? I mean, look how miserable you are, Cassidy. I sighed. That's the trouble with pranks, Delton. They take on a life of their own. Officer Weston nodded in agreement. Can you start small? Could I practice with a little prank? I don't see why not, Officer Weston said. When I was your age, and that was as far as he got because Miss Glennon and Miss Melton Military were back with a basket of something covered in a napkin. I would say bread, but bread was something I liked. Surely it could not be something I liked. Or she'd find a new way to torture us by instructing us to eat it crumb by crumb. Our second lesson today will be about bread, Miss Melton Mowry announced as the two ladies took their seats. Return to your dining posture, everyone. We all sat up at attention, but somehow I knew we wouldn't just pass the basket around. Miss M&M would have to jaw about it first. I rubbed my grumbling stomach and waited. The basket is most likely to be in the center of the table. If you cannot reach it, you stand up, lean over with your left hand slightly pressed against your dress or jacket or tie, 
so that it doesn't touch any of the items on the table, and take hold of the basket with your right hand, returning to your seat. You lift one corner of the napkin and take a roll between your thumb and forefinger like so. I wanted to say, like a knuckleball, because I knew it would make Officer Weston laugh, and in fact, come to think of it, a joke is a little bit like a small, like, excuse me, a joke is a little bit like a small prank. But no matter how I dithered, as old Mrs. Parsons called it, we still got to go to lunch at Stocking Elementary. Since eating here wasn't guaranteed, I chose to keep quiet. If there is an assortment, praise be, Officer, West, Officer Weston added. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I lost my place. Since eating here wasn't guaranteed, I chose to keep quiet. If there is an assortment, praise be, Officer Weston whispered. Miss M&M raised her eyebrow, but she didn't stop talking. At breakfast, for example, you might have poppy seed muffin, a scone, some banana bread. You must choose with your eyes. The first thing you touch is your choice. I raised my hand. But what if your favorite is at the bottom and you have to move something else around to get to it? You mean like a cinnamon roll? Officer Weston asked me, can you use a spoon, Miss Melton Mowry? Miss Melton Mowry set down the basket and replaced the cover. We are not diving for buried treasure. You may have to forgo your first choice in favor of a more convenient option. You could say dibs on the cinnamon roll and pass it around until it's uncovered. You will say no such thing, Miss Corcoran. You will receive the basket with your left hand and you will pass it with your right. Fortunately, you will be spared the agony of such a choice today because all the rolls here are the same. I put a lid on it. I was starting to salivate. Miss Glennon took the basket and passed it to Officer Weston. I'm gluten sensitive, she explained. Of course, you may choose not to take any bread at all, then just pass it along. If I'm feeling faint, can I take hers? Never take more than one until everyone has been served. If at some point during the meal you feel you would like another roll, you must offer it first to everyone else. Like so. Would anyone else like another roll? Miss Melton Monarchy held up the basket. Officer Weston raised his hand. There's no need to raise your hand, Officer Weston. Well, what's the point of that? I couldn't help asking the question. None of this made any sense at all. If you let everyone go before you, the rolls will all be gone. The point, Miss Corcoran, is to be polite. The point is to the reason you are sitting opposite me today. When we learn the rules of polite society, we open the doors of opportunity. Why don't we just open the doors of the kitchen, I grumbled. Are polite people always this hungry? Miss Melton Mowry decided to ignore me. It's a normal developmental stage for every one of my teachers. At some point, I'm just not there. Of course, before we could get our one measly roll, we had to listen to another lecture about how you don't put the roll in your mouth and bite down like, normal, like a normal person. What you do is leave it on your plate and pinch off a piece. Then there's a whole other slew of rules about how you butter it. And if you press too hard on that icy pad of butter and it lands on the floor, you can't rinse it off in your water glass like a sensible person. You have to leave it on the ground and eat your stupid old roll without it. Polite people are sure to starve to death. A couple of bites of fruit and a roll the size of a golf ball took the whole hour. As Miss M&M and Miss Glennon took the bread basket and the dishes back to the little kitchen, I whispered to Officer Weston, let's play, let's play a prank on Delton's mom. How so? Well, she wanted Delton to take this class with me so he could get some backbone. Okay, Officer Weston nodded. So we tell her something she wants to hear. Will you play along? As long as I don't have to break any laws or tell any lies. But you'll go along with mine? He looked up at the ceiling and whistled under his breath, which is a sign for, I know nothing. End of chapter 11.